So, innovation versus standard patterns. Now, we could ask Alex down here for help, but I've got one better. I've got a real life patent attorney. It's Phil. Hey Everyone knows Phil. Tell us, doing? Phil, the difference between innovation patents and regular patterns. <laughs> How long is a piece of string, Dave? Um, all right, so an innovation pattern is, is a lesser form of uh, pattern. So it's a, it's a lower standard of um, re uh, invention required to get the patent granted. So is, is it an invention? It's, it's, not, it's technically not an invention, it's right. an innovation. So the, the step that you have to um, pass at the patent office if you get it examined is an innovative step, not an inventive step. But you so don't have to get it examined. You do not have to get it examined ever in its whole entire lifetime. The only reason you would, the only reason you would do that is if you actually wanted to in, enforce it against an infringer. So what's the point having it if you don't ever get it examined so it's enforceable? Well, the reason the reason <laughs> that you get them is that so you have them available if an infringer does come along at a later point in time. Oh, so if somebody comes along and you want to or somebody copies your product and you want to Sue them. Yeah, that's, then, that, you, that's, then, then you go get it examined. That's when you. That's when you look at your your <laughs> uh, your document, your description, and you go, I can make claims out of my description that cover this person's product. Right. That's trying to copy my my idea, and then you go off to the patent office and get it examined with those claims that are directly targeted to your infringer rather than um, ah, rather than trying to so you tailor it. Yeah, so you're tailoring it at the at the time that it's relevant rather than speculating at the start as to what's going to be important. Is it cheaper? It is cheaper to get a, um, granted because you, know, you don't have to go through that examination process. Mm. I think once you get into a, um, a stage where you are examining it, it's probably on par with a standard pattern, but as, as you don't have to go, go that cost, it's a completely optional. How much does the examination cost versus just getting the innovation pattern to begin with? So the innovation pattern, if you just filed it without a patent attorney, which is not recommended. Um, you can because probably, then Phil would be out of the business if, well, if, you, if you write your own waffle. Well, that, that, that that's the thing. That's that waffle that, that you're going to rely on down the right. track. That, that's yeah. going to that's going to be what you need to tailor your your patent in the first place. If you just wanted to file it yourself, it's a few hundred bucks at the patent office. If you file a description, um, if you get a patent attorney to do it, they'll write the description. So it's going to cost about not not. It's going to be a bit cheaper than a standard, but not much difference. To right. actually file it properly, but then you don't have the examination costs unless you need it, and it'll be it's a bit it'll be, it'll be a bit cheaper to go through mm. that examination cost if you needed it. And the examin but the examination takes a long time, doesn't it? Like six months plus, doesn't the, it? The examination, or is it shorter for this compared to a regular one? It's probably it's probably a bit shorter. Um, it, it depends a lot on how how diligent you are in getting back to the examiner. So if you, if you get an examination right. report and you get back to them straight away, they're, they're going to get back to you again pretty quickly. So it can be done within a month if you push it. Oh, wow. Okay. Where, but a regular patent takes, can take years depending on the complexity. Uh, how, how, why does it take different lengths of time for different patents? Uh, uh, when in Australia, when you get an examination report, that sets a clock. So it's actually mm. a, you have one year to then overcome all the examiner's problems. Um, from the time that you request the examination to get that first report, that takes a long time, mainly because of patent office backlogs. They've, right. only, got, they've only got uh, a few hundred patent uh, patent examiners, and they're they're examining how many a year? Ten thousand a year. Ten thousand a year, just in Australia. Just Australia. Right. Does the US have an equivalent to an innovation? No, patent? they don't. No, they don't. In any other country, or it's just an Aussie thing? China has one. Um, they call it a utility. Um, model mm -hmm. um, versus an invention model in China. Um, that's a bit different from an innovation. You you can you're not allowed to patent a method in Chinese oh, utility what, model. Oh, like a, like a manufacturing method. Like or a manufacturing something. method, yeah. Right. Yeah, and you can only um, patent a product. Ah, whereas interesting. In, whereas in Australia, you, you can have method, you can have product, you can have any 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 of the normal claims you can have in the standard patent. If you get an innovation patent here in Australia, it's only valid in Australia. And what? But what if you want worldwide protection? Do you, does that force you into a re, a real patent, or like a full patent, or does it? Or if, or can you get an innovation patent in Australia and then a full patent elsewhere in the world? You you can file an innovation patent in Australia first up, um, and you've got 12 months. Then you can make a decision if you want international patents. Right. And they will have to be the standard normal patents you would get internationally. 
So the, probably the cheapest way into a pattern is to get an innovation pattern and, and don't get it examined. And then you have 12 months to decide to build your business up and decide if it's going to be worthwhile getting worldwide coverage. That's that's one way. It's not the way we'd normally recommend it because right. once once you've filed your innovation, same with the standard, you can't change it after that 12 month period. Uh, you can't you can't change the description. Oh, you can't change the description, but you can add different countries later. Yeah, right. uh, within okay. within that 12 months. Right. Uh, what we normally do is we file a provisional application. So. You the same same process to start with. We, you write your description, get a patent attorney to help you with the description. Mm -hmm. You get 12 months. At the end of that 12 months, you can then decide whether you want utility uh, models overseas. You want an innovation patent or a standard in Australia, or you want any other overseas international patents. Right. But at that 12 month point, you can change the description. Got it. Within within the same ambit of the of the invention. Is there any limits to what parts of the description you can change, or can you change the entire thing if you wanted to? You, you've got to you, you've got to be within the same idea. You, right. You, so you, okay. You, you can add improvements. You can add different different ways of, of achieving the result that you started with, but you can't got bring it. in brand new ideas. So roughly, how much does it cost for? A pattern these days in Australia? How long is it length of stream? Does, exactly. it, does it vary based on how much you, obviously your time, you charge the time it takes to write the application, yeah. right? So norm normally we, we would give a quote on writing the application based yeah. on the technology. What if it was like some simple little one or two page jobby? Like what would be the absolute cheapest chips you could get the done for here? cheapest chips wouldn't be a one or two page jobby. You right. Probably, you'd be probably about a 15, 20 page jobby. You can probably get away with it for under five, maybe four to five grand. Four to five grand for a simple mechanical yep. type inventions. If and the mechanical ones are easier. Mechanical ones are easier because Why you, is that? You, you're basically just working off the the, the, um, the drawings. Yeah. So, you, so you're just writing out what you see, right. how things interact between each other. When you're dealing with things like computer software or hardware, there's a lot more involved mm -hmm. to it. There's different regulations worldwide in different countries, so you got to basically account for. The systems in each in each country. So, in case you do want to go out internationally, your patent is set up correctly to do it at, at that point. Are software patents still a thing? Software patents are still. They've a thing. changed, though, haven't they? They they are make, making it difficult. They are right. more difficult to get than they used to be. Here five, and in Australia. Uh, here and in the US. And elsewhere. De definitely in Australia. Um, US yep. probably still a little bit more easier than Australia, but um, mm. they are still trying to track crack down on software patents in the US as well. Right. How do they crack down? Does it have to be so innovative that, so inventive, that it's you know, oh, it's like wow, no one's ever thought of that, <laughs> or does it, you know, no, no, because what... most of them seem to be little incremental things from the patent trolls and whatnot. True. Um, or, or do they still? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're getting into into the into the sort of the it depends um, right. terminal uh, right. territory here. A lot a lot of the patent um, examination reports we get back from software type inventions is mm -hmm. your patent is not patentable subject matter. So they say you're just a business method. You're just a scheme. You're right. just an idea. Yep. You can't patent a, an idea or a or a you know, business scheme. So you, you you've got to you've got to really show some um, real physical effects mm -hmm. or utility. So the examiners have a, a list of about twenty different things they look at, and the more you get into that list, the closer you get to being able to be a patentable uh, invention. Right. The more things you tick off, is that yeah. the, is it's, that it's, a secret it's, list, or do you know what it is? No, and, no, no, the, that's the, the list is on the patent web, okay. patent office website. You can find it. It's in okay. the examination manual. But that's where your value comes in. You can tell somebody that no you'll well yeah you have to do this 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 and this and you're more you, you, likely to pass you, usually yeah we, we, right. we, we never work in, in absolutes or positives um <laughs> because you know you're, it, you're not in charge of well i'm not in charge of examination and it's going to change yeah. in a couple of years anyway there's court cases coming up this ah. year that, that may or may not change the system entirely again Here? In, in Australia, Australia yes. right? This uh, innovation pattern thing is going to change, right? All that have they already phased it out, or um, phasing the it out? The innovation pattern is, still exists. You still can get them. Um, yep. They are trying to phase it out. There was a push by the the industry to keep them, and right. and it was temporarily delayed. The, the the death of the innovation pattern was temporarily delayed, but it's been brought back into the latest proposal 
for right, for but it's not. The law. It's just proposed. It's not hasn't hasn't come into force right, yet. Right, hasn't come into force. Why do we know the exact reason why they're trying to do that? Not really, not really. Um, because they're whoever's in charge of the uh, IP Australia, um, mm. they are made, have made a call that it's either not economical uh, from a um, benefit to the society stance. Um, because it's obviously beneficial to the small it's a, it's, midnight it's, it's, engineer. It's entirely right? beneficial to the small small inventor yeah. or the incremental ideas that you have when you're developing products. Sometimes it's not enough of a step to get a, a full pattern. It's not a full, completely inventive step, but you've mm-hmm. made an innovation. It has a substantial improvement to the way it yeah. works. It's new and you need to be able to get you know, protection for those sort of innovations. And the difference is, correct me if I'm wrong, but a full invention patent has to be non-obvious to somebody in the trade. Even but, though it hasn't been done before, if it's uh, if engineers like us go, oh, that's obvious. Yeah, exactly. You know. That's the basic um, yeah. premise of the, of the in- inventive step. Right. Um, we don't use obviousness um, formally in Australia. They, you, you, ah, they, use, it, they use it in right. the US. Okay. They have uh, novelty and obviousness. We have right. novelty and inventive step, and inventive step is is basically obviousness. If, if like if like like you look mm-hmm. at um, a circuit and say, well, there's no really no other way you could do that. Right. For that for given that problem, uh, you you're trying trying to solve that problem. That's the obvious solution. You, you you're not really going to get a patent for that. Okay. Or in theory, you shouldn't. It, it doesn't mean they're shouldn't. not going to grant no. it because the the problem is, isn't it, that the um that the examiners aren't. Well, they're expert. Like you're a laser, you're a PhD laser physicist, right? So you you do do less you do, laser stuff than right. I used to, but yeah. uh, no, but I, you I were hired for your crops. expertise in laser yeah. physics. So um, that was why the firm hired you for then they could yeah. sell your expertise to specific to, to the, clients. To the, to the client, yeah. yeah, right. But you can't expect the examiners to be. To know all the history of engineering and know, oh, that was published in the 1970s in X magazine. Everyone no, knows that, you know. No, that's that's quite that's, a, quite often a problem that would come up, come up against it. The examiner right. has a has a sense that um, something's not inventive or, or would be would be obvious, mm. but doesn't really have the background knowledge that a, a full engineer, complete um, that's been around since the 70s or yeah. 80s, would know. So, right. um, so you're telling me it's the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, we, sometimes we get right. objections that are basically that. Oh, okay. They won't say that in as many words, no. but they'll. Will they typically reject it outright, or will they come back and say, "No, you don't have a chance in hell"? Or no, will they no, come back you, and say, you're, you're always, "You always get an opportunity to respond." So right. okay. you get a you get a report. Examiner says, "I don't think. I, I think maybe it's new. Maybe I, I can't find anything that says it's not novel." But, yeah, uh, but I don't think it's inventive um, because of the X, Y, and Z reason. It, right. This has been around. A uh, person would uh, um, come to this conclusion. What, whatever words they use, they've, they've, they've got some form paragraphs that they use a lot. And then right. you always get an opportunity to respond to that with with right. evidence or um, arguments or or account or changing your or changing the or claims, changing yeah. the claims. But an innovation pattern is different it doesn't require that inventive step it can be just a and even an obvious thing as long as nobody's done it before right um is it has it? to have uh, there there is novelty it's the same same right. test for novelty for newness oh okay uh, as right. a standard pattern but yep. the the next step novelty define novelty that's just it hasn't been done hasn't, before. hasn't been done before that that they know of. that they know of. But oh, you just because the examiner hasn't found it doesn't mean it doesn't it, mean it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it is, is yeah is it's not on some website globally somewhere. novel yeah, yeah. Or, you're yeah. you're always going to be subject to um, right. re- review if it goes goes to court down the track someone's going right. to do a, a proper patent search yep. or or a more deeper patent search yep. and they may find something that that would kill the novelty but you can only work well on what you've got at the time right. when you're of course. With the examination so, what but, happens when you go to defend your patent which costs millions by the way. You can't get away with defending a patent, like and winning a case under 
uh, yeah. under seven figures, right? You, you, you're pretty much looking up yeah. 500 plus. At, at least. Yeah, you've yeah. got, you got to be budgeting for, for yeah. about a mil as, as a minimum. If you want to actually defend it all the way to winning the case, as opposed to just sending a cease and desist to yeah, someone. Yeah, because so, if, if you start yeah. with a cease and desist, the first thing they're going to do is going to do a, no, a novelty search. They're going to yep. find some prior art that the examiner didn't find. And they're going to try. They're going to lodge a counter motion to mm. basically revoke your patent. And say it's, it's right. not. It's not new okay. or it's not inventive. And so you're basically fighting two different arms. So you're ah. work, you're, you're fighting an infringement case. Yep. Um, does their product infringe your claims? Yep. And you're also fighting the the counter motion, which is is my patent valid, valid. valid over yep. the, over this new prior art that they might find. How easy is it to prove that a patent is not? Valid is it? Can you just like literally take a magazine from the 1970s and say, "Look, this circuit was published in the 1970s. That's it. End of story. Case closed." Is it that easy? It's, it's, Do they... it's very rarely that easy. Right. <laughs> but but if <laughs> depends you depends on the quality of your lawyers, right? If you that if the... you did happen to find somewhere published in a journal article in in yep. Russia that is the exact same circuit that's been that's right. been granted as a patent somewhere, mm. then pretty much you're not going to be novel. Right. So case it might it's pretty, prob probably case closed. case closed. Okay. But it still could drag on for years if you've got really good expensive lawyers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there's always <laughs> tactics. There's always tactics. I right. don't do a lot of litigation, so I can't really yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah, no, of so. course. <laughs> you're not a litigation patent uh, no, lawyer. I'm, I'm, you're no, a granting. I'm, what, I'm, what's I'm the definition? What are the terms? Prosecution. I prosecute patents from. Oh, okay. Start, not not prosecuting branches, cases, but not, prosec but not prosecuting infringements. Is it, do the same companies do both? Things yeah. or do so, they? So, so you know, most patent, well, pretty much all patent firms will have. Mm. Patent attorneys who are scientists that have done a master's in law, right. in intellectual property law, and so they're patent attorneys, trademark attorneys, and then they'll have a, a litigation or legal arm that mm. helps with commercial agreements, assignments, um, transfers of ownership, whatever, sort of, and then they'll also have a, lit a litigation arm which which deals with infringement and defence on. Right. Innov standard, so innovation may go away here in Australia. Innovation may go away. Um, we might might find out more information in the next three three four months. Right. Find out depending on what happens. But if you nab one now, you've you've got it. Yeah. If you, right. if, you if you file one now, it's not going to die. There are they're only going to they're only going to stop the, the the filing of new innovation patents. The people that have already got innovation patents now, they're not going to not going to wipe them clean. Mm. They're still going to exist. They're still going to have the same rights as what you've got today. Yeah. It's just that if it comes to pass that innovation patents are killed. By the by, the powers that be, then they'll stop the stop accepting them as new filings. So the easiest way to get a patent is to get a provisional up front to get a patent attorney to write the patent. You obviously don't recommend writing your own patent because I then you're do, you're out of a job and it's not really. Uh, no, defendable. well, it's not. It's not that. <laughs> it's um, not that. There, is, of course, there is some element yeah. that I, I would be out of a job if everyone was doing their own right. writing patents. But um, if you look at the statistics. Of the people that write their own patents, maybe less than 0.1 of a percent actually ever get granted. Oh, really? So it's not even a matter of defence. You're not right. ever getting it past the patent examiner because is that the because the patent examiner will have a low opinion if it's because they they can obviously see that it hasn't come through a a the, patent no, attorney. The, the examiner right? the examiner won't won't judge you differently whether you've had a patent attorney grant um, write your patent or not. Right. It's a matter of. Um, what you can do once the examiner finds prior art that, that he thinks is relevant. Okay. So the and then how to argue your case yeah. for that. So okay. you, ha you can only rely on right. what's, in the, what's in the description of your patent application during the examination phase. If, you're, if your description is short, it's not complete, it's, it's, it's sort of um, very brief, you, mm. don't have, you don't have anything to fall back on. So you, you've got to really consider all the options up front and put them, put them all into your document in your provisional, mm -hmm. and you say you can't get away with like less than like twenty pages. It it just has to be filled with waffle. Uh, well, it, it, it's it's not it's not waffle. It's not waffle. I know, I know. I'm <laughs> there are some standard paragraphs. I'll I'll, I'll admit to that. Yeah. But <laughs> Phil's job is cut and paste. Cut and paste. Cut and paste. <laughs> that's five hundred dollars an hour, please. Cut that, and paste. That, that's that's about maybe four or five pages worth. Right. The rest of it is actual actual description of your invention. So. And why? Why do they have to take 
a perfectly understandable diagram and turn it into the hand-drawn why is it all they're all still hand-drawn right hand-drawn weirdy oh you've got a Presumably yeah. you got a program to do it. Do you have special pattern drawing tools? Um, to I, do I don't. Um, right. Does if such I, a thing exist? Well, there's, there's, there's Autodesk Inventor. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but they all have that the same similar look, you know? Yeah. They all, is, um, is that just historical? Is historical. Is it just, right. A lot of it's historical. Okay. Right. Um, but also it's about being uh, being reproducible. So if, if you've got um, graphs or grayscale mm. images and things that show your invention really really nicely you can't put them in a pattern because once you start photocopying that a couple of times right you lose the photocopy you lose the, the, the photocopying quality. thing's still a thing it is still do, do you still use faxes <laughs> <laughs> some some pattern attorneys do we right. don't, i got to be we don't but we have right. to we have to be able to receive them okay um, it would be mo i think mostly japanese i think are still using fax ah, machines for wow, correspondence really? there you go. mostly but pretty okay. much everything's done by email these days right i mean I, my inventor can be anywhere in the world, and I can still yep. I can still communicate with them. It, it's you do obfuscate, obfuscate though to a certain extent. Not intentionally. Right? Not intentionally. Not intentionally. It's, it's not it's not that. It's clarity. You've got to you've got to be you've got to be absolutely clear on what you're describing. Um, so yep. that's why you have a lot of numerals and lines that that would cross into your nice drawing. Yeah. But you you've got to you've got to. And everything's numbered. Yeah, you you got to enumerate every every single feature of your diagram. Yep. And that number has to appear in the description. And each paragraph is numbered, right? It usually well, kinda, sorta. Yeah. Um. The US has um a, a system of four digit numbering. Um. It, it's just basically for referencing. Right. Yep. So and you can so, reference so, a paragraph. So an examiner yeah, yeah. or. In paragraph three hundred and twenty-two. Yeah. Line line seven of right or, okay. or line thirty eight of right. page forty nine. You know, it says this. So therefore, you know, this is this is my basis for changing the claim, yep. and this, this is my inventive feature. <laughs> the, the the best thing I, I can suggest you do is at least talk to a patent attorney. Right. Um, but they won't talk to you for free though. Most usually. will. Most will. Um, right, most will. Most most will give you a half hour. Right, they'll 45 just... minutes for, right. for free. If you okay. come in, right. have a chat with a patent attorney, they'll go through the, through the system with you. They'll, yep. go, they'll go through the requirements that you need to go on with your patent application and how, how it works. And usually we'll, we'll give that for free. How many tyre kickers do you get coming in? <laughs> do you get... Like, but you're at a reasonably large-ish firm. Yeah, um, right? I've never really had... A lot of tire kickers. Right. Um, you don't. You don't really get a lot. Who've of... got no money and they don't want to. They don't realise it costs five, ten grand easily. Oh, oh we, get, we get. We get those. Um... Right. <laughs> I think it's going to cost a couple hundred bucks. Dep depends where you where you get your right. get your leads from, basically. Yeah. But like people walking off the street, you don't mm. get many of those. But they're going to be the ones that probably don't un un understand the cost involved. Yeah. Involved, and which is tens of thousands of ten, dollars. Yeah. Yep. If, if you're going to do it properly, it's going to be tens of thousands of dollars. Yep. And if you're doing it internationally, you got to you got to think, you know, three four hundred. Right. To get everything through to granted patents. What can't you patent? You still can't patent free energy, right? Is that banned? Is that banned in Australia? I know it's banned in the US, isn't it? Anything to do with perpetual motion over unity. You've, well, yeah, your patent has to be useful. So right. that, 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 that's, the, that's the terminology yep. we we use to say. Um, a perpetual motion machine is not useful. You know, it can't. It can't. Generate. But they'll argue that it will be. It will be if it works, <laughs> and I guarantee you it works because I built it in my basement. And <laughs> I'm sure I've measured it right. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and an examiner might uh, yeah. request a demonstration. Right. Not that I've ever had one, but but, but there, I thought they were specifically banned in the US. Like over Unity, it's like. Is it's there's probably I don't think it's actually in the legislation. Oh, right. Okay. Um, it, it's just uh, right. You can't you can't patent something that's not useful. Okay. And you can't patent an abstract idea. You can't patent an equation. But in theory, in theory, <laughs> if somebody did develop an over unity machine that gave more power out than power in, and I'm not talking about air conditioning. If, if, about... if, if, they, if they could prove it to a to a patent right. examiner with accepted physics. They, right. They, they may get it accepted. accepted. physics is the key thing. You know, yeah. Now, could you patent new physics? Let's say you're a physicist, like you're one of the world's leading physicists, and you've invented something new. 
You, could you? As I said, you can't patent an equation. You can't patent right. a, a okay. law of nature. Okay. You, you can you can patent an yep. application of that. Um, oh, no. I always okay. use the example. You yep. can't patent Einstein's E equals M C squared. That's yep. that's a law of law of nature. You can't patent that. Look, Dad, bubbles. That's got a good head too. Let's all put the Einsteins on the map. The boys finally done it, Mother. How'd you come up with it? I discovered the formula for splitting beer atoms. Emk. We've got to register this at the patent office. But you can patent an atomic bomb that, that uses that equation as its got fundamental it. basis. You can patent GPS yep. technology. You can patent all, all applications of the theory, but not the theory itself. Right. So splitting, physically splitting the atom, you could patent that, the process of the doing process that. The process of doing that, yeah. Right, but the physics behind it, you can't. So that's that's the same here in Australia. But yeah. though, it, like, do you get people it's, it's like pretty, that? It's pretty, it's pretty common worldwide. The, yeah. the, those standards are pretty common. Have you ever gotten somebody like that who's like, you go, dude, this is just not... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, this breaks the laws of physics. I Last year, I think I had a run of about four or five in a row. Wow, really? And I, in each case, I just said, give me a demonstration. Give me a video. Show me how it works. Yep. No. Give me some, give me some equations. You know, prove it to me first. Yep. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Have they that. shown you videos? No. <laughs> really, they no don't one's even. Back. Right, because <laughs> usually you'll get the YouTube videos, you know, of like, oh look, this, <laughs> it's got magnets and it spins on its own. Yeah. I try, right. I try, I try and be nice to my adventures that come up <laughs> like that, and, and and try and help them through the process of, yeah, um, yep. getting a getting a reasonable idea that right. you can present to an examiner. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems and you're going to spend a lot of money trying, trying to get your patent through the examination process. And the examiners will ask for a physical demo, will they sometimes? I have, a, I, have, I have heard of that happening in the US a long time ago, but I don't know right, how Right, it doesn't happen. happen. Not, not in recent times? Not in recent times. Okay. I have, have had patent examiners come back and say your, your um, claims you know, defy the laws of known physics. Right. It got through the patent attorney so this sanity is, checks and so it made it through to the examiner. This particular case, it was a US originating case right. that, that filed the US patent application and then they filed in Australia. The examiner came back in Australia and said, look, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not using um, accepted physics. Yep. And, and he came back and gave a 100-page derivation of his new physics, <laughs> which, 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 which was... Which was Diligently filed at the patent office, and they will diligently charge you the examining fee. Of course, I presume. Does, so the examining fee changes based on how much no. effort they put in. No. no, it's fixed. No, it's a fixed fixed fee uh, right. uh, up front. Um, so even if you come back with that hundred page derivation and you give it back to the examiner, the poor examiner's got to read it. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the poor examiner's either either got to read it or or. Right. Um, I have heard of cases where it's just gone, it's too hard, fine, have your patent granted, try try enforcing, it's up to you. Oh. <laughs> They'll rubber stamp it because they don't want to do the work. <laughs> I have heard that happening in, right. in, in okay. the rarest of cases. Okay. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So it's a, is that a thing? Just bamboozle them with enough stuff and they'll just... <laughs> it's got to be legit. If they put this much effort, rubber stamp. Is that? Uh, I wouldn't suggest that and no. I, I don't think it would okay. work, work these days. Right. Have you ever gotten too much information and then you've got to prune it down? Too much stuff? Or is that rarity? That, that's fairly rare. Um, most, most of the time I, I'm, I'm working on um, short paragraphs or short right. ideas or I'll, I'll work with what I'm, I've been given from overseas foreign got associates, it. foreign patent attorneys. Well, will you literally get the back of the napkin sketch? <laughs> No. Is that not a thing? No. No. no They've no, usually no. got a bit more. They, they don't turn up and go, look what we did at lunchtime. And... <laughs> no, I haven't, no, seen, one. I haven't okay. seen one of those. Right. Is that the holy grail? Someone turns up with the napkin and, geez, this is really good. Yeah, we can do this. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can make a 30 page pattern up for that. <laughs> so, but could somebody just come to you with a, a simple diagram and go, look, I don't know how to write for, for Jack. Can you do this? Um, so we, we, we would work with them to, right. to un understand the invention and to get it down in words, yep. And charge them. And charge them. 500 bucks an hour or whatever the going rate is. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Phil. That's no all about problem. I hope that's I think our frame completely, rate's a bit completely bamboozled dodgy. you all. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, <Nice>. Phil. <laughs> Catch you next time.